Everybody. Ambassador Larry Huggins here in Barcelona, Spain. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome back to your good life. I took a little break for a couple of weeks, but now we're back on schedule. And this is number four of the series, Jesus Was Not Homeless. And it's part of a manuscript of a book I'm writing called Codex Rex, the Book of the King. And I get into Jesus' lifestyle and how he really presented himself, how he really lived. And it's an eye-opener. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for blessing everyone who's watching and listening. And I pray that these words will get inside of their hearts and minds and transform them so that they can begin living the good life that you have to us, for us, to the fullest in Jesus' name. Right, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it super abundantly. And um, that's what we're contending for is uh, the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Praise God. There is nothing wrong with living life to the fullest. That's what it's all about. We're not supposed to be miserable. You know, the old song says, into each life some rain must fall. But we don't, uh, we don't have to have uh, raining all the time and singing the blues all the time. Well, enough of that. Let's get into our episode Jesus was not homeless, part four. And I want to read Luke 5.29 to you. And Levi, I'll talk about him in just a second, made him, Jesus, a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. Levi made a great feast, made him a great feast, made whom a great feast, made Jesus a great feast. You remember uh, Jesus saw Levi sitting at meat, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a moment, and he, and he said, follow me. And then after that call, Levi made Jesus a great feast. Now, I'm aware that a lot of sources say that Levi put on this great feast for Jesus in his house, but uh, a closer reading will, will prove that it wasn't Levi's house where the meal was. Yes, Levi sponsored the feast. He paid for the feast. And, uh, you know, he associated himself with the feast as the host, but he did it in Jesus' house. And I can, I can make that plain. I have a lot of scripture to back this up. But uh, before we talk more about Levi, let's, uh, let's talk about this word uh, company. There was a great company of publicans and others. Praise God. This happened to Jesus a lot. He would have big feasts. This is a Jesus type of feast, and there was a, a great company. The word company in the Greek means a multitude. A multitude, that's a big number of people. That's not just like, you know, a, a half a dozen people or a dozen people. It's a multitude. A multitude's a, a, a crowd that's hard to put a number on. You can put a number on, say, 24 guests or 100 guests, but that's not a multitude. So you gotta, you got to get rid of of any preconceptions that you have about how many people were at these events and think about the number multitude. But it didn't just say multitude, it said a great multitude. So that's a superlative. So this was a, a really, really big crowd of people. And I don't think Levi had a place large enough to have a great crowd of people. And, and let me tell you about Levi. He was a tax collector. And tax collectors were despised by the Romans. Romans didn't appreciate the tax collectors. They were, they were uh, cheats and sneaks, and, uh, and they did a lot of dishonest things to pad their pockets. And, of course, the Jews hated uh, the tax collectors. Let me turn off my, uh, my timer there. Uh, the Jews hated the tax collectors because they were working with the Romans to exact taxes out of the Jews and give them to the Romans. So it's obvious that Levi did not have a lot of friends. He was in this thing for the money. Why would he build a big house that he didn't need that had this room for all these guests? 
if he didn't have any friends. <laughs> it's very unlikely he had no friends. Uh, th these, these tax collectors were hated and despised. But Jesus, on the other hand, had a house that accommodated a great number of people. Now, let me talk to you about Levi's motivation. Uh, first of all, it says, Jesus saw a publican named Levi sitting at receipt of custom, and he said to him, follow me, and he left all and rose up and followed him. Okay, who followed whom? Did Jesus follow Levi to his house where Levi met him, uh, made him uh, a feast in his name? Or did Levi follow Jesus? Well, Jesus said, you follow me. So this is the direction this thing is going, is Levi is following Jesus. Where did Jesus lead him? To his house. And uh, what did Levi do? He put on a big feast for Jesus. Uh, you know, he reached in his, in his bag and he pulled out the money and he paid for the big feast. And he was pretty smart in doing this. You know, the, um, the Levi's were opportunists. They were in it for the money. They weren't in it for the popularity. Um, they were considered the, the rankest type of sinner. And uh, he saw the crowds that Jesus was gathering and the, uh, the people who were so loyal to Jesus, and they were all talking about this new kingdom that was coming. And everyone expected Jesus to be enthroned as the king of Israel, a greater, a greater kingdom than Solomon and to drive or push the, the Romans out to overthrow Roman rule. So uh, when Levi is hearing about this, he's thinking, oh my God, this is the end of the gravy train here. The Romans are gonna be out and the kingdom is going to be in. I'm gonna switch sides. And so in order to send a message to the Romans and to endear himself to the Jews, remember, uh, uh, Jews didn't like uh, tax collectors, so he had to do something to get in with the Jews. They all loved Jesus. They were all expecting this kingdom to come. Everybody was vying for a position in the new kingdom. And Levi said, okay, this is my opportunity. So he put on this banquet. He sponsored this banquet, and he sent a message to the Romans that he was he was departing from, uh, from their, their employment and he was sending a message to the Jews, to the kingdom people, I'm now a part of you. And where would be a, a better place to make such a statement? In Levi's own house or in this, this big, wonderful house that Jesus had that people congregated at all the time? Yeah, he sent a stronger message by doing it at Jesus' house. And listen, Jesus had the place to accommodate such a group. If you have not been listening to these messages, uh, go back and listen to them. They're posted up on, on YouTube, uh, on the Z Church uh, channel on YouTube. And uh, also you can go to our blog, uh, to our website and read these as a blog. This is a printout of my blog right here. And uh, you can go to the website and read it online or do what I do and print it out. And I would appreciate after you've read or listened to give me some comments and you can challenge what I'm saying or uh, one fellow from Texas just wrote me and he gave me three good ideas to think about. And I'm thinking about adding some of his material to my book. So if you have something that you'd like to see included, tell me about it. If there's a better way for me to say it. In other words, I'm going to crowdsource here and ask you to help me write this book, Codex Rex, the book of the king, and it's gonna shake things up. Uh, we've, been, we've been holding on to this old idea that Jesus was a poor vagabond person who had no money. No, 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 he was the king of Israel. Codex Rex, the book of the king. And so go to zchurch.life and read the blog, leave a comment, leave an offering. And uh, uh, what else do I want to say to you? I think that's about it, except that remember, a Z Church meets every Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. And you can be with us on the Z Church platform. Just go to zchurch.life. You're one click away from being live where you can see and be seen and interact. Or you can go to Facebook Live, uh, Larry Huggins on Facebook. And um, I think it's generally on our Z Church page on Facebook. 
And then uh, you can watch it live on YouTube on our channel and also on Twitch. Praise God. So there you have it. Sometimes the most beautiful things can be so simple.